Google Classroom. So the whole thing is there. So if you want to double check and you're like, you know what, I need to just make sure I understand this, you go for it. Um, I did have these up for a bit so you could kind of check. I think the one that I want, I really want to focus on today is the fact that once you figure out the interest you pay for that particular first payment, take that away from your payment, right? You take that interest away from the payment to figure out how much of that payment goes towards principal. Principal is actually going towards paying off that loan that you took, right? So the bank says the first payment comes around. The bank says, thank you very much. We take 72.83. And then the 220 goes towards bringing your loan down. Okay. So way to go. Uh, you know what? I, I really appreciate you working through this and giving it a go. Uh, it allows me to see, you know, like, are you on the right track? Sometimes I see mistakes. And big deal if you make a mistake, right? Not like... Oftentimes, I can see, okay, just change this, and then you're on the right track again. No risk whatsoever. So I appreciate you working. That makes a big difference. Let's go to question two, and, and uh, I just want to talk about that, and then I'll transfer some of this over to our booklets, okay? Um, so let's say you have two loans. They have the same amount, right? Same interest rate but different time frames to pay it off. If that were the case, if everything is the same, but the time is different, which loan is going to have less interest paid? Explain in your own words. So you'd have to say loan B, right, would have less total interest paid, right? Because the lower term will always result in less overall interest paid because you're taking less time to pay it off, right? Um, so. It has less time to for the interest to accumulate, right? But lower term is means less interest paid overall. Which loan is going to have a higher monthly payment? What happened there? Payment, right? Uh, explain your own words. Loan B would have the bigger, right? Because if you take less time to pay it off, right, the same amount, you need to pay more every month to make this happen, right? So that's sort of like the rationale there. Which loan would you choose? Why? There's no right answer here. So you could say I would choose uh, option A because it would have a lower payment, leaving me with more to spend on other things, bills, right? Or you could choose B because I would save on the total interest paid. So some people rather pay more, but then they know they're gonna save more in the long run, right? So uh, it's up to you, it's up to you what you decide there, as long as you justify it properly. Okay, question three is just a private sale. Uh, I'm gonna just mention, right, I'm using my used private formula. Make sure you have those formulas on your study sheet, right? And um, the book value is higher, so we pay PST on the book value. There's a safety and a lien search. So this is what it costs after tax just to buy the car. Then I throw in some parts and labor, but that's, a, that's part B, right? So we figure out all of our parts and the labor involved. The parts and labor is always 12% tax, so that's what we pay there. Total cost of car, including parts and labor. So I take my answer in A and B, right? I combine them. This is what you would be paying, including all the parts you spent on the car. Then I switch it up on you here. What if you purchase the same car for 12,000 at a dealership, right? How much would it cost after tax? So because it's a dealership, we pay 12%, so you pay this much, and you can tell that you paid more than making doing all the repairs and everything. You still paid more going with a dealer. And so how much did you save? You just subtract those two answers, right? And that gives you uh, the savings there. So that's a bit of an exploratory comparing, comparing making sure 
right? We understand how that works. So if you, right, I encourage you to work through this still. It's posted online. And um, let's go to our notes now and write this down, okay? So we're going to go to page, let me see here, one. Just going to make sure I get the right page number. Page 20, oh, sorry, 19. On page 19. <clears throat> Write this down, okay? 19. Okay, so how can you reduce the total interest paid on a loan? So if they ask you, right, like how can, you know, George pay less interest overall on this loan? What can George do? Okay. Don't say get a cheaper car, right? Because we're assuming like you decided on a car and now it's time to sign the paperwork. But before you sign the paperwork, there's things you can do to reduce the total interest you would be paying. So here's, here's one. You can make... a larger down payment right if you make a larger down payment you're going to owe less right so obviously less interest will be accumulated there you can make additional payments I talked about that right like the additional payment like if you get a car loan for five years uh, you say well I have an extra 50 bucks that I can afford every month set up a second payment please on the same day right running alongside your actual payment you will speed it up and if you don't have money anymore to make that extra payment you just cancel it no no harm done right so you can make additional payments here's another one you can decrease the term of the loan. In other words, i.e., right, pay it off faster. Uh, another word for term is amortization, right? If you say I want a smaller term or a smaller amortization, right, you decrease the term of the loan, pay it off faster. <clears throat> another one is make lump sum payments. That's it. That's all I'm going to say there. Lump sum is, uh, I don't know if I talked about it already, but if you get, you know, 200 bucks for Christmas, lucky you, right, 200 bucks, you can either spend it or you can go to the bank and say, hey, $200 towards my loan, please, Ching, right? The beauty is all of that $200, every single cent is going to go towards bringing down that loan. Your payment doesn't, but anything extra does. So it speeds it up, you'll be surprised. And then second part of this, how could you lower your monthly, what happened there? Anyways, your monthly payment. How could you lower it? Like you're about to sign you're sitting down in the office and you're like, you know what, I, I, don't, I want a lower payment. Let's, let's open it to the, to the floor here. What do you think you could do to lower your monthly payment? 
maybe feed off of what I just told you above, maybe. If it's a four-year loan, what could you do to make it a smaller payment? Not all at once. Make it a five-year loan, right? Take longer to pay it off. That's what you wanted to say, right? Uh, increase the term of the loan, i.e. take longer to pay it off. Increase the term of the loan, take longer to pay it off. You can increase your down payment. So for both of them, increasing the down payment helps you. You owe less, so less interest. And because you owe less, you also have smaller payments. That's all I'm going to say there. And now we're going to skip a few pages. So when I, when I make you write these down, I actually, there's a very big chance that you'll be asked to justify a scenario, right? How can so-and-so lower the monthly payment? What can be done, right? So we're going to go all the way to page 24. And uh, maybe, maybe you did this already in grade 11. You should have, but you know, COVID was kind of a, a pain in the butt there, right? Like it, not, not everything went as planned. It's still around, but anyways. So let's focus on these amortization tables. We are only going to do like three, maximum four lines, but here's what I want you to see. So look up on the screen. You go online and you grab a uh, amortization or a loan calculator. This particular loan is over five years. Five times 12, 60 payments, right? So every single payment has, watch these two columns here. Every single payment has an interest portion and a principal portion, every single payment. So you can actually ask your bank to give you this or you just go online and type in your information. So watch, this, this particular amortization table is 60 payments long, 60 rows. We're not gonna do 60 ever. Uh, we're just gonna do, right, one, like the first three months, for example. But watch this. What happens to the amount of interest you pay as time goes by? It comes down, right? Why is that? Because you owe less. Every, after every payment, you owe a little bit less and a little bit less. So the bank gets a little bit less every time. Okay? Um, and the principal, what happens to it? It goes up, right? So the interest goes down, principal goes up. But So these two are always there. Right? If you were to add them up, they always add up to your payment. Okay? So let's go back to our book. And let's answer this question here. So Jamal purchased a vehicle for 12 grand. He had to borrow 10 grand. So a $2,000 pay down payment was made, right? Uh, for 4.25% at three years. So here you're just gonna have to trust me a little bit because we're gonna continue with this tomorrow. But let's figure out his payment. Payment is 10,000. Is that's that's how much you borrowed over a thousand write that down okay and I will give you that this is 2969 like that and if you calculate this which you should know already how to do 
you get two ninety six ninety a month. I don't know, maybe you've never had a loan yet. Good for you. But the payment doesn't change. Once you have a loan, the payment stays the same. So let's go ahead, copy this into every single every single one of these cells. We put in 296.90 with a dollar sign. And now we're going to fill in the rest of these cells. Go ahead. So the interest, folks, pay close attention to this. It's the lowercase i. So it's loan. Okay, times interest rate, and we divide the interest rate by 100, and that answer gets divided by 12. I hope you can see that, but it's the same formula that you've been using over and over, right? It's the lowercase i. So this is lowercase i, and this is lowercase p here. So how are we going to get our principal? Just like we did in this uh, assignment you just worked at, payment minus the interest you just found. So it always starts with figuring out the interest, and then we move our way down this row. So at the beginning, we owe 10 grand. So you go 10 grand, write this down, times the interest rate, which is 4.25 divided by 100. And that turns to this as a decimal. All of that divided by 12. Have you done this before? Last year? Did you do amortization tables? Doesn't seem like it. Okay. That's what I'm taking. I'm going to start today and do more tomorrow. And so if you multiply these and divide it by 12, you get... How about you just trust me for now? It's $35.42. This is the first month interest that you're paying. To get this part, we take 296.90 and we subtract the 35.42 we just found. And that gives you 261. Just write this down for now. 261.48. This lowercase i, the bank gets that. The 261 that remains after they took their share, that goes towards knocking down the amount you owe. So I show that work by just going, right, I take this, subtract it here. So now it will be 9,738.52. Will be your new amount that you owe. So your loan just went down by a little bit. Let's do this one more time. So you take this, watch where my pencil is. My pencil is right here. That is the amount that you carry with your second line. and you repeat the process. So if you get the first line right, everything just basically repeats itself. So now it's that amount times 0.0425, and it's 34.49. And it makes sense, it dropped a little bit, not a lot. Here we go, 296.90, which is my payment, minus 34.49. If you're into accounting, you're going to love this, right? Because it's number crunching, make sure you don't miss anything, right? So you subtract that, you get 262.41. 262.41. 
and this knocks down the amount you owe again. But it's not the full 296, it's just a little bit, right? Like they've taken away some of interest. <clears throat> when you do this, you get 9,476.11. You do the last row before we go today, okay? So you, you repeat what we just did. Fill in that last row. See if you can do it. Before you go, you have five minutes. So you can probably do it in two. Yeah, question? You know how to do these they actually are a lot of fun so just look up on the screen if you want to check uh, make sure you have dollar signs every cell has to have a dollar sign There we go. I'm just going to do this here. If you have a highlighter. Just so you know that it, it transfers over, right? So ultimately we can keep going. In this case, we would have to do 36 of these until your unpaid balance is zero.